Hey kids, it's me, Jeremy Vaney. And if I'm wearing an Empire Strikes Back t-shirt and I'm unkempt, it must mean I don't care about you again. <laughs> well, okay, I care enough to do this video. One last video for the road. Maybe, maybe there will be others, who knows. Um, today's lesson is on the nature of desire. That's right, desire. Not the U2 song, the actual desire. Why desire, you may ask? Well, because it's a, sort of a big controlling factor in all of our lives, and I think that if we can break this down slowly and methodically, you'll see what it means to actually uh, authentically delve into the problems of the self that plague us all, um, that are us all, the self that is us all, uh, and, uh, and just understanding them transcending them, because understanding is transcendence. There is no other step. Um, that's just it. There is no path that you need to climb um, or travel, um, and that's what it means. To say that, that there's no path, it means simply by understanding, the problem disappears, uh, and if there be transcendence, it be there. Now, interestingly, my Good friend Teokas and Ghost Horse says um, there's no such thing as transcendence, or he thinks it's nonsense, um, or whatever. And I uh, agree with him to the extent that he means it. Uh, but uh, I think to come from the heart, as does he, um, takes transcendence of the brain based self to get there uh, and beyond. So I think for him, um, and perhaps by extension for the Lakota uh, and other indigenous peoples, this conversation is meaningless because they don't need this. But we Western folks, well, we're all trapped up here, aren't we? So we need to transcend that and include it. Transcend and include. It doesn't mean that you say your ego is bad, bad ego, and you do away with it. It just simply means um, through understanding, uh, you know, the the good is recognized and the bad disappears because you're, you're not confused anymore, right? There's no more confusion, and so you're living rightly. Okay, so let all of that just fall where it may. Um, I just want to take you into the depths of desire in a way that you have never heard before because people don't talk like this. Uh, so what is desire? When you think of desire... Right, we think of personal desires. I want, I want that woman. I want that car. I want that man. I, uh, all of that. I want. Desire is want. Right, synonymous terms. But where does that come from? Where does want come from, really? Um, I mean, let's let's just think about this here for a minute. Desire. Um, what is it that you are doing when? you want. What is it that you want? Usually you want to take something, right? That's what desire is, really. I mean, there are people who want to help and do other things and, and all that, but really desire as a lust for, a greed for, uh, you know, a need to substitute for um, is getting things, is the accumulation of things, right? It's building you uh, or building stuff around you, which are kind of the same thing. Um, so it's, it's fear, really. The, the root of desire, in one sense, is fear. Um, the fear of annihilation, really. Um, and that's what is meant by the fear of death. Because I've said before, and written before, that we all fear death. And then inevitably I'll have somebody say, well, I don't fear death because I believe in an afterlife. Or I don't fear death because I've had a near-death experience, or an out-of-body experience, or some spiritual thing. Um, and the answer to that is, right, because the way that we mean death nowadays um, implies a transition. It implies that you're going from the physical into something else. And so for some people, that notion is scary, and for some people, it isn't. Um, but deep down, uh, what death really is, I mean, that's the thing that we've, we've done to cloud over the meaning of death. The real meaning of death is annihilation, is non-existence, nothingness, right? Uh, and we want to be something. We don't want to be nothing. Even those who say, I don't believe in an afterlife. I don't believe in anything. Um, well, again, that is a guesswork. Um, and so your belief is disbelief. 
uh, and they're both the same thing. They are both born to fortify the the sense of self. Um, see, you see how this is sort of a, a shady thing that we do. Kind of a it's a tricky thing. So you're um, you may say I don't fear death, I don't fear annihilation, but that's a lie, <laughs> and I, it's it's self evident in what I just said. I think. Um, you know, as long as you have some way to define what comes next or does not come next, there's the sigh of relief. Ah, now I can live my life because I, I have that defined for me. Um, and it's nonsense. Whether it's true or not. Like, let's just say some ideas of what happens in death are true. You don't know it. And so for you, it is nonsense. So don't worry about what other people say and say they've experienced. So, okay. In this fear of annihilation, which is fear of death, uh, we build this ego self. Um, and so part of how we build this ego self is to is through desire, is through accumulation of, of objects and people and, um, you know, however that pans out in one's life, the accumulation of things. Uh, and so maybe you've heard that part before, right? Maybe that's that rings true to you, but Let's go a little deeper than that. Where does that even come from? Um, that wh What is it in the brain that says desire, 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 seek, uh, accumulate? Um, well, I submit to you for your judgment that, uh, that the body has needs, right? We have necessities. Uh, you need food. That is the intake of objects to live. <laughs> we need to breathe. That is inhaling, um, taking in air, exhaling. Um, so you're taking in, you're taking in, and then you're giving back poop or whatever. But the point is you're taking in, you're consuming air, and you're consuming food, and um, consuming affection. Um, you know, these are just general needs. And so when um, a creature such as ourselves comes out of animalness, however that pans out, you know, I don't care if it's evolution or aliens came and did it or, you know, whatever belief you want to put on that, I don't care. None of those things are relevant to me. What's relevant is, uh, or none of those things are relevant for the sake of this discussion. What's relevant is that the animal wakes up, transcends its animal state, transcends and includes its animal state and becomes human. Um, so now if you think of, okay, you've got physicality here, and then you've got, you know, sort of wafting off of it, this ether, this mental, what we break into mental spiritual space. Uh, how do we inhabit that? That's something new. The eye cloud or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I mean, aren't we inventing that, right? We're inventing um, storage, uh, virtual storage. And that's what this is. It's virtual world. It's So how do we fill virtual world? Well, initially, virtual world is going to uh, be a reflection of physical world. And immediately, what it's going to be a reflection of is uh, physical processes in the brain, in the body. It's going to reflect those. So the... Um, ethereal person, that is you, that is me, that is Jeremy, um, wakes up into this body, right, or is a product of the body, waking up and exploring uh, a, a new mental construct, this new virtual storage system, and creating it as it's going. It's creating and exploring at the same time, and how it's creating it and itself, its environment and itself, all up in here, um, is originally based on the physical patterns of the body. Um, they emanate into there. Uh, and then beyond that is the observation of things in the environment, in nature, how things work, um, all that. Uh, so desire then really is uh, sort of a, let's say it's a, it, a I don't want to say misguided, but, but perhaps unhealthy, uh, yet necessary. I mean, these things aren't they're going to happen. Necessary means they're going to happen. So there's no judgment in that sense. There's no sense of this is wrong, um, just that it needs to be acknowledged. And in that acknowledgement, 
it is fixed. In that completely understanding this, the problem is fixed. But the problem is an original problem. Um, Christians might call it original sin. I don't know. But the point is, it's an original problem that is necessarily going to be there when the beast wakes into um, more, into moreness, <laughs> more space. Um, so what is the problem again? Well, the problem is that the somehow the brain, the body wakes up into uh, a sense of self um, that is beyond the animal, a sense of uh, self-awareness that is beyond what it formerly was, yet includes what it formerly was. And so before it has a society or anything, any sort of direction to guide it to be in this ex new existence, uh, it takes from what it knows. It takes from its own physicality. Uh, so it, trans it transfers those needs of uh, food, breathing, affection, whatever. Um, it transforms them into desire in this mental space, right? So this need, uh, on the one hand, becomes this unhealthy desire on the other, um, constantly needing to consume and bring things in, bring people in, um, in these unhealthy ways, um, because now you're awake and aware, and to be awake and aware is to be afraid. That's just what it is. To wake up into this existence and be self-aware is to be afraid, um, initially, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but do you stay there is the question. And so I, I think seeing through some of these things and seeing what, what the, the origin is um, can maybe help you, I don't want to say help you get past them, but help the self uh, dissipate so that w whatever is past them becomes you. Um, so that's it. The root of desire, physical necessity, um, which gets translated uh, when it bubbles out of physicality into iCloud storage. I'm <laughs> just a commercial, really, for cloud storage. Uh, yeah. So, tell me what you think. Um, I hope that gives you enough to tug on um, and play with, you know, what am I going to do? Spell everything out for you? Do a little work here, people. Come on, you can do this. Chop, chop. <laughs>